In this podcast episode, the hosts interview Ben of the Week, a popular YouTuber and TikToker with over 6 million subscribers. Ben discusses his rise on YouTube and his unique style of content creation. He describes his videos as very, very unserious and chronically online, tapping into the underbelly of the internet. He talks about his origins on Vine and YouTube, his motivation to create, and his love for the freedom and lack of gatekeepers that the internet provides. Ben explains that he was inspired by other YouTubers and the ability to create and distribute content without relying on traditional media. He mentions watching YouTubers like Shane Dawson and PewDiePie and being fascinated by their ability to connect with audiences and create videos that people were invested in. He wanted to be a part of that world and have the opportunity to reach people all over the world. The hosts discuss Ben's videos and his ability to take small, seemingly insignificant things and blow them up into comedic and satirical pieces. They mention his videos about the vegan teacher, where he confronts her and explores the nuances of her message. Ben explains that he wanted to show that even though her messaging may be extreme, the underlying message of veganism is still valid. He also talks about the concept of the jester's privilege, where someone can make outrageous videos that people don't take seriously, allowing them to convey important messages in a unique way. The conversation then shifts to the current state of YouTube and the challenges of appealing to Gen Z audiences. Ben explains that Gen Z appreciates authenticity and doesn't respond well to forced attempts to connect with them. He advises brands and creators to be themselves rather than trying to mimic Gen Z humor or trends. He also discusses the concept of being chronically online and the overwhelming nature of constantly consuming content on platforms like TikTok. The hosts ask Ben about his experience with brand deals and monetization. He explains that his first brand deal was with Love Sack, where he received a free Love Sack in exchange for an Instagram post. He later had brand deals with Ralph Lauren and other companies. He also talks about the shift in brand partnerships from 2019 to now, where brands are now trusting creators and allowing them to maintain their creative vision. The conversation then delves into the different eras of YouTube that Ben has witnessed. He mentions the Minecraft era, the edgy side of YouTube with creators like Filthy Frank and Leafy, and the Casey Neistat era of daily vlogging. He talks about how these different eras shaped his perspective on content creation and inspired him to create his own unique style of videos. Ben also discusses his perspective on originality in content creation and the challenges of finding truly unique and innovative ideas. He mentions the video essay genre and creators like EMP Lemon who are able to answer questions that viewers didn't even know they had. He reflects on the current state of YouTube and the lack of truly groundbreaking content, but also expresses his admiration for creators who are able to push boundaries and create compelling art. The hosts ask Ben about his experience as a full-time creator and his journey to making a living from his content. He explains that it took time to build up his income and that he initially relied on live streaming and donations on TikTok for revenue. He eventually reached a point where AdSense from YouTube became a significant source of income, allowing him to go full-time as a creator. Banoff Week admires creators who start companies based on their genuine love for the products they create, such as Feastables and Emma Chamberlain Coffee. He believes that these creators are able to create something meaningful because they are passionate about what they do. However, the conversation then shifts to the topic of creators making brand or product collaborations that feel like money grabs and lack genuine passion. Both Banoff Week and the host agree that it is easy to tell when a creator is not fully behind a product or brand. They attribute this phenomenon to the emergence of people who see the potential to make money off of creative individuals. While some people genuinely want to collaborate and create something meaningful, others are opportunistic and only interested in profiting from the creator's success. The host points out that many creators feel the need to build something beyond their YouTube channel due to the uncertainty of the platform and the fear of losing relevance. 
Banoff Week agrees and mentions that he has been approached with both good and bad offers. However, he believes that retirement from being a creative person is unlikely, as creativity is a part of who he is. He emphasizes the importance of looking at things on a long-term scale and not putting too much weight on individual projects, as creativity will always be a part of his life. The conversation then delves into the importance of choosing the right partners and collaborators. Both Banoff Week and the hosts agree that it is crucial to have people who want the creator to succeed but can also afford failure. They caution against bringing on partners who rely on the creator's success for their own financial stability, as this can create unnecessary pressure and hinder the creative process. The podcast concludes with a light-hearted discussion about Reddit and internet subculture. Banoff Week jokes about using Reddit to pirate movies and the hosts playfully suggest consulting him for all internet subculture needs. Overall, the podcast highlights the challenges and opportunities that come with being a content creator and building a brand or product. It emphasizes the importance of genuine passion and long-term thinking, as well as the need for trustworthy partners who support the creator's vision. The conversation provides insights into the creative process and the complexities of the creator industry.